Okay, so what I want you guys to understand is that before the mark of the beast happens, there's going to be a test on food and health. Here you go. And there's a reason why. Remember, the very first temptation um, when it comes to sin, the very first temptation is the temptation of appetite. Hi. Temptation of eating something that you shouldn't be eating. And sometimes I go through that. Sometimes I have an appetite for certain things that I shouldn't have an appetite for. Um, I crave certain things that I shouldn't be craving. And it's bad for my body. The test on eating is that important to God? If that was the very first test. I mean, he could have tested him on other things, right? But the very first test that he gave them was the test of food. So that means it's important to God. And I believe that in the very end, we're going to be tested on health and food again. In Revelation 17, there is a harlot on top of the beast. And what did, he, what did that harlot make the world to do? Or influence the world to do? To drink of the wine of Babylon. The harlot influenced the world to consume something that they shouldn't be consuming. What are you doing down there, Jonas? You crying? You crying down there? <laughs> So, we just got uh, an order, the, an order of the, um, the books that came in. Okay, so we got two cases of this book, um, and they're already sold out. But, we're gonna uh, make another order or shipment. But today, we're gonna fulfill some of the orders, some of you guys, your guys' orders, and we're gonna ship it out tomorrow. Bye. What are we doing today, Lacha? Okay, today we are packing the books. First package done. So today, we're going to be using this book for those of you guys who have not yet got this book, this is the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. You guys can find it at sfp.center or you guys can go to the description box and you guys can find this there. This is really useful book. So with me, I have um, issues with my high blood pressure and with my allergies. And so what I'll do is I'll use this book. I'll go to the allergy section. I think it's in page 48 or something like that. Let me see page 846 and by the way guys this book has over 11,000 inexpensive home remedies so if you if you guys have sicknesses and things like that if you guys need home remedies this is the book for you it's got over 11,000 inexpensive home remedies so right now I'm looking up uh, allergies because I have seasonal seasonal allergies this time of year I always get uh, you know seasonal allergies and so I'm looking it up and it's telling me it tells me the causes Okay, it tells me the causes of this the allergy um, Smoke molds pollen perfume formalin of course I believe also that I've formed you know this allergy the allergies of mine because of the years bad habit of me eating really bad foods um, meats and uh, certain oils cheese dairy things like that i believe that all those things had really um affected my body i mean your guys's body might be different but my body it really affected my body so it tells you the symptoms it tells you the causes um, and this is really good because this is a book right it's a book so if if uh, let's say the internet shuts down market of beast happens internet shuts it down you can't pay for internet all these things you got 
physical copy here of all these things. Um, it tells you the natural remedies, okay? It says begin with a short three-day cleansing fast. And it tells you all these things here. Take vitamin C, take vitamin A, zinc, um, essential fatty acids, uh, vitamin B complex. Um, so it tells you all these things. It, tells, it, it also tells you the herbs that you need. And so the way that I'm going to use this is now that I know that, that uh, the herbs that I would need... I'm going to now grow those herbs. So all these things that it gives you, it gives you all these information, all this information on that one disease or that one sickness. When that time comes around uh, of the, um, you know, the, the, the mark of the beast comes around, you can't go to the doctor. You can't go to the clinic. You can't go to the hospital. You can't do none of those things because there is no buying or selling. You're not going to have insurance. You can't pay for insurance. You can't pay monthly. You can't do all that. You, you're going to have to be your own, your own doctor. You're going to have to be your own doctor. Watch this. I'm going to show you guys something. Before the Mark of the Beast, did you guys know that there's going to be a test before the test? The test, the, the real test being the Mark of the Beast. Actually, the, the real test is if you, ha if you are reflecting Christ's character or not. I believe that that's the real test. But... Let's say the mark of the beast is the test, right? Is the test for the whole world, the whole world, okay? Did you guys know that before that test, there's 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 another test. There's a preliminary, I guess you can say, test. Revelation 14, Revelation 13, the mark of the beast is connected to false worship. Those who worship the beast have the mark. Are there any indications in the Bible, in the Old Testament where there is a there's false worship? In Daniel 2, there's a prophecy. The prophecy consisted of, what is going on? The prophecy consisted of uh, um, the a statue, right? The statue, the head of gold, the, the chest and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of bronze, the legs of iron, the feet of iron, iron and clay, okay? That was King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar did not like the fact that there's going to be a, a, a succession of kingdoms he believed that his kingdom, he wanted his kingdom to be the kingdom for the rest of the time, for, for, the, for, for the entirety of the history of earth. Okay, And so what he did, because remember in Daniel 2, it says that the, the head of gold was Babylon. Okay, So Babylon was the head of gold. In Daniel 3, Nebuchadnezzar made a statue and the statue was made of what? The statue was made all made of pure gold from top to bottom. That means he rejected the chest and arms of silver. He rejected the idea of the belly and, bronze, belly and thighs of bronze. He rejected the idea that there's going to be coming a, a, a kingdom of iron. He rejected the idea of iron and clay. Since Babylon is the head of gold, we're going to make this statue all gold. And then he said, hey, look. At the sound of the trumpet, at the sound of the sackbut, and all these, the music, at the sound of the music, everybody's going to bow down to this image of, of me, of a man, a, a statue of gold. Okay? So, was there false worship in Daniel 3? There was false worship in, in Daniel 3. Before the false worship, what were they tested on? In Daniel 1, they were tested on health. Right before the test on false worship, there was a test on health. Remember, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted everybody to eat whatever he ate, all the delicacies of Babylon. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they said, nope, we're not going to do that. And then they said, test us for 10 days. Test us for 10 days. Let us eat um, a pulse. So vegetables, grains, and all these things. We don't want to eat those meats. We don't want to eat those um, flesh pots. We don't want the wine of Babylon. We want real food. We want healthy food, right? So for 10 days, they ate healthy foods, and they were uh, they, they were fairer and fatter. The, the word fat actually doesn't mean fat as in obese. The word fat actually means healthy, like uh, muscular, okay? They were more fair than the Babylonians that ate from the king's table, ate, ate the delicacies of the king. There was that test before the real test, which is false worship. El the story of Elijah, was there false worship? There was false worship. In fact, King Ahab built an altar uh, um, for other gods, 
not God, not, not the God of the Bible. He builds an altar for a different God, okay? A pagan God. And then it also says that he built groves, okay? Watch this. 1 Kings 16 and verse 30, it says, And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it, were, as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove. So these are false, uh, you know, pagan um, deities. This is false worship. Now remember, there was a showdown at Mount Carmel. There was a showdown. Okay? Remember, Elijah had to restore true worship. Remember, there was a showdown. There was the, the 850 false prophets against this one true prophet of God, which is Elijah. They were supposed to put a bullock on the altar. And they were supposed to pray, the, the prophets of Baal were supposed to pray to their gods, or Baal. Um, and Elijah was supposed to pray to his God, the God of the Bible. And whichever God would devour the bullock by fire is the true God. So there was a showdown there. There was a test of either True worship or false worship at Mount Carmel. But before Mount Carmel, what happened? There was a famine. Remember, Elijah told King Ahab that there's not going to be any dew nor rain for three and a half years. No dew nor rain for three and a half years. What happens if there's no dew or rain? No food. Famine. So if there's a famine, does that affect your health? It does. It affects your health. So Elijah had to learn how to survive without food in the wilderness. And God gave him food. God gave him food and water, actually. Is that going to happen today? Is that going to happen with us? Is there going to be false worship in the end? Yes, there is. There's going to be false worship worship in the end there's the worship of the beast or the worship of god but before the the test of false worship there's going to be another test a test of your health are you truly going to rely on the on the methods of god are you truly going to rely on god's ways of eating or are you going to are you going to rely on the uh, the, the eating ways of Babylon, from the table of Babylon, Babylon's table, Babylon's wine, Babylon's flesh, pots. What are we going to rely on? This is why this book to us is so important, I believe. This is why this book is so important. Okay, The Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Again, this was made, um, authored by Two Adventists, over 11,000 inexpensive home remedies. It talks about more than 730 diseases. Gives you information about it and gives you herbs and what you can do if you have those diseases. Because we are going to be tested also on health. We're going to be tested on health. The reason why we're going to be tested on health, we're going to talk about it later. We're going to talk about it later. Okay, let's go. I, got, I actually got to go shopping right now. All right, so we know that in the very end, we're going to be tested. We know that the test, the ultimate test is the, I wouldn't say the market of the beast, although it, it does externally, it is it's the market of the beast, but internally, really, it's, it's, it's the test of whether you are reflecting Christ's character or not. That is the test. We are supposed to reflect Christ's character. That means we are supposed to be keeping the Ten Commandments like He is keeping the Ten Commandments, not according to our power, not, not because of our power, but because we are relying on the power of Christ to help us to do that. Remember, the Bible says in Hebrews that, 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 that Christ is able to help those who are in their sins. This is why he came in the, in the, after the seed of Abraham, it says. What Christ really came here to do is to show us what man can do if only we had faith in God. Just like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had faith in God and he was, he was obedient even unto death. 
it says. We can do the same. He's giving us that same power. Jude 1, or Jude has only one chapter, verse 24 says, And unto him who is able to keep us from falling or sinning. God is able to keep us from sinning. It, it depends on your faith. Do you have faith or not? So the final test, yes, we have this mark of the beast. We have all these things. The final test really is, do you, are you showing the, the are you reflecting the character of Christ? That's really the final test. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is an example for us down here. Watch. Let's go to, let's go to Esau real quick. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Follow his steps. Okay? Follow his steps. Remember that. How do we follow his steps? What did he do? Remember, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth and the life. So the way, meaning the path. He is the way. So we must follow him. In his ministry, how did he open his ministry? He opened his ministry by getting baptized. Okay? We are reborn. We are born again when we get baptized. And then after we get baptized, we must follow Christ. Before Jesus Christ ascended up into heaven, there were a couple things that he that, that he went through. He had to suffer certain certain things. He had to um, he had to do certain things here on earth. But if you look at when he went to the wilderness, the forty days in the wilderness, what happened there? Remember, was there false worship in the forty days in the wilderness? Did Satan present false worship to Jesus Christ? Remember, there's going to be false worship in the end. Did Satan present a false worship to Jesus Christ at the, at the, in the wilderness when he was being tempted? Matthew 4, starting from verse 5, Then the devil taketh him up unto, into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now watch this. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Question, is there going to be a time where we are going to look at all the world, all the earth, and we're going to say, yep, the earth, I'm going to inherit this earth. <clears throat> Remember what, the, what Jesus Christ says, that the meek shall inherit the earth. Keep that in your mind, okay? The meek shall inherit the earth. We're going to look at the earth and we're going to say, yes, we will inherit this. How do we inherit it? How do we inherit the earth? Okay, keep that in mind. Put that aside for now. Look what it says. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give unto thee if thou wilt, what? Fall down and worship me. Did Satan present false worship to Christ? Satan presented false worship to Christ. And what did Christ say? Did, 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 Christ, uh, did Christ bow down? No. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus went through the same things that we are going to go through. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says. Wherever he goes, we must go. So whatever path he takes, we must take. Is there going to be a time for us where we are presented false worship and we're going to have to, it's going to be a test. And we're going to have to say either yes or no to this test. Yes, that's the mark of the beast. Remember in Revelation 14, the mark of the beast in Revelation 14 and Revelation 13, the mark of the beast is directly connected to false worship. Whoever worships the beast and receives his mark. 
those who worship the beast and receives his mark gets thrown into the lake of fire. That's Revelation 14. We are going to go through this testing period of false worship. Are we going to, going to reflect Christ's character or not when it, when it comes to false worship? Did, what, what did Christ do? When Satan presented him, presented to him false worship, he said, nope, not doing that. We're only serving God, the Lord. We're not worshiping anybody else. Are we going to reflect that same character? Question for you. Are we going to reflect that same character? I'm hoping that you guys reflect that same ca character. I'm hoping that we all reflect that same character. But did you guys know that there was a test before that? Remember what we've been talking about. There's, there's the false worship, and right before false worship, there's a test of what? Health and eating. Why? Because in Revelation 17, the harlot makes people consume something that they shouldn't consume. Just like, in, just like Adam and Eve, they consume something that they, they shouldn't consume. And then they gave the dominion over to Satan. They, Adam gave his dominion over to Satan. In here in Matthew 4, Satan is tempting Jesus to give dominion over to him, to Satan. But Jesus, being the second Adam, defeated Satan here. He said, nope, not doing it. I'm not giving you dominion. You can show me all these things, inheriting the earth and all these things. I'm not going to inherit the earth through worshiping you, Satan. Are we going to reflect that same character? By the way, we're talking about the test, right? The test before the test. Was there a test? Did Jesus Christ have a test before this test? Yes. Remember what Satan remember what Satan tested him with. Watch. And when he had fasted, this is Jesus Christ, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered, and the tempter came to him, and he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made what? Bread. Was there a health test? Was there an eating test? Did Jesus Christ go through a testing period where the, 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 the tempter tempted him to eat something? Is there going to be a time for us? Remember, we are supposed to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Remember, uh, um, the Bible says, in, I believe it's in 2 Peter, we just read it earlier, that Jesus Christ is our example and we should follow in His steps. Jesus Christ also said that if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. Whatever I went through, you're going to go through, he said. That's why we're following him, his footsteps. So before we get to the, to the testing of the false worship, what happens before then? The testing of what? Food. Food. Why? Remember the mark of the beast. Those who do not have the mark of the beast cannot buy or sell. What happens if our food is being touched? We can't, there's no food for us. We can't go to the stores. Why? Because mark of the beast. We can't buy or sell. We can't go online to Amazon. Why? Because mark of the beast. No buying, no selling. We can't go to Instacart and, and order some food on Instacart or Uber Eats or, or Grubhub or whatever other um, sources of, of, of ordering food you have. You can't do that. We are going to have to learn how to grow our own foods. We are going to have to learn how to grow our own foods. We, can't, we, we are going to have to learn how to be healthy. We're going to have to learn how to be healthy. We're going to have to learn how to, how, to, how to be in the country and be self-sustaining in the country. We're going to have to learn that. Can't go to stores. Can't go to Grubhub, Uber Eats, Instacart. Can't go to Amazon. Can't go to a restaurant. None of that. We can't go to a clinic. We can't go to if, there, if we have any health issues that, that, that we bring upon on, on ourselves because of what we eat. If we have any health issues, we can't go to the doctor. No insurance. No buying or selling. That's why Mrs. White says that this issue of buying and selling 
is going to be a serious one. Imagine. Imagine you have no, you have nothing else. Imagine you have kids. They're sick. You can't go to no, you can't go to, to the clinic or to the doctors. You have no money. You can't buy. You can't sell. What happens then? This is why it's so important to learn these things. Go online, learn these things. My wife and I, my, I, 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 t I, I paid for my wife's uh, medical missionary course and I'm paying for another course that she's going through for another six months because I know how important it is. It's important. I'm trying my best to just stop eating the things that I shouldn't be eating because it's important. It takes time. That's why, that's why it, it's good to, to start right now. If you guys have, you know, if you guys want to want to go to some to uh, one of those courses, take courses on how to grow your own foods. Do so. Do so. The, these things are useful information. Take courses on how to heal yourself. These are these is these are useful informations. Take a course on how to grow your own food. Take a course on how to survive in the wilderness. Take a course on how to how to uh, build yourself a greenhouse to be self-sustaining. Buy books on how to be self-sustaining. We have books that we purchased online on Amazon. It's called the Self-Sufficient Backyard, and it teaches you how to it teaches you how to homestead, how to be self-sufficient. We have books on how to heal yourself, which is this, this, this book right here. The Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. This book teaches you on how to heal yourself so that you don't need the doctors. Because the doctors, what they're going to do is serve you pharmacia anyway. These things are very useful. They got, this, this has useful information inside. And if we, if we can, we can even put the self-sufficient backyard in our, on our website, sfp.center. So think about these things. Think about these things. There are free classes online. There are free courses online. There are free uh, tutorials and YouTube videos online that you guys can, can look and, and watch. So you guys can start uh, learning these things. My wife and I, we've been trying to, we've been trying to do it for the past uh, year now or, or, or a couple months now. And we even purchased things like this. We purchased them. Um, we even purchased things like the self-sufficient backyard. All these things are useful information. And we do offer this in our website. If you guys want one of these, we do have packages as well. The links for these are in the description box below, sfp.center. This is the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia by the two authors that are Adventists. Okay? We also have the Self-Sufficient Backyard. The link is in the description box below. And if you guys can research some courses, some free free books online or some free um, information online, do so. Learn about these things. It's very important, especially if we're going to go through the mark of the beast. So, please do that. If that is your desire, please do that. Please do that. We thank you guys again for sticking with us. If you guys were blessed by this video, please like and share. Share with your family, your friends, your coworkers, anybody who you know would be blessed by this information, by this useful information. If you guys want to support this ministry, please do so. You can support by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. This is the way that I support my family and this ministry so that we can reach more people out there. If you guys want to support that way, please do so. The link is in the description box below. Go to sfp.center or schoolforprofits.tv. It takes you to, to the same uh, website. And the links to all of these things are also in the description box below. Thank you guys again. Praise God always. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Avocado Grease. Mama.